Welcome back to the workshop. I'm going to continue now on the Bridgeport Mill restoration by finishing the disassembly of the head with this uh, quill housing. I'm going to start with removing the downfeed engagement lever. It's just held in with three socket head cap screws. And once those are out, it just pulls straight out from the housing. Turning my attention to the other side of the quill housing, here I'm removing the four socket head cap screws that hold on the power down feed speed selector. With that off, it exposes a hole where there are a couple of set screws that hold in a shaft as a gear cluster that's all attached to part of this power down feed engagement mechanism. With those set screws out, uh, I can now lift out this entire gear assembly. Need to make sure I don't lose this pin. It's part of the lever. Everything else here looks fine. The gears don't look worn or anything, so I'm going to leave it uh, assembled as is. I'm going to replace the micrometer scale, but I'm going to take it out now so I don't lose the screws. There are two screws on the top of the quill itself that hold in the quill skirt. I'm going to go ahead and take those out now. One of those screws also holds in that felt washer you can see there. There are two socket head cap screws that hold the cover to the down feed engagement clutch in place. That third screw you see there is actually a, an adjustment screw. With those screws removed, I can remove the clutch cover and along with it, the half of the overload clutch mechanism and the uh, trip lever. I start removal of the down feed collar by removing the set screw. Then I'm going to turn the collar and there is a screw that hides a spring and a ball bearing for a ball detent. The spring is easy enough to get out with a pick. The ball bearing on the other hand didn't come out right away. I tried using this magnet but it wasn't coming out on its own. I didn't have any luck getting the ball bearing itself out. I figure I could just pull this collar off, uh, you know, leaving the ball bearing intact there, and I'll, I'll get it out after the fact. But I'm pretty sure that it's that ball bearing that's keeping me from getting this collar off. fell right at my feet. How lucky can you get? There's a key in this downfeed shaft that has to come off in order for me to remove the um, feed trip bracket. And then there's a bevel gear behind it. I want to get both of those out. So I need to remove this key and the other folks that have done this and done videos on it certainly made this look a lot easier than mine went.
All right, with that key out of the way, now I can take off the feed trip bracket by removing these two socket head cap screws. Now I use a magnet to remove this bevel gear, which I believe is part of the feed reverse mechanism. The keyway on the shaft has some burrs on it, so I'm just lightly stoning it in order to get that gear all the way off. And here I'm removing the trip lever pin that the trip lever pivots on. My trip lever was missing um, that will have to get replaced. This cap that I'm unscrewing covers the reverse trip ball lever. It's part of the downfeed trip system. The reverse trip ball lever is threaded internally. Its intention is so you can take a fine threaded bolt and remove it from the housing. With the bolt threaded in, you just kind of pull on it and it comes right out. This one looks fine. It might be a little bit bent, so I'm going to go ahead and replace it. Next to come off is the quill stop micro screw along with the micrometer nut and the jam nut. I didn't realize it at the time that the jam nut and micrometer nut were two separate pieces and they were just stuck together here. Um, it probably contributed to why I had such a hard time removing them from the micro screw. These two screws hold on the cover to the clock spring. Once I remove them, the clock spring's going to want to unwind. I just let it. There's another one of these lovely snap rings on, that holds on this other half of the overload clutch. Barry from H&W Machinery, when he was explaining how to remove this, basically said, listen, you're going to destroy it, so just order a new one. So I ordered a new one, and I just destroyed it to get it off because it wasn't coming off easy. And with that snap ring out of the way, I can push the quill pinion shaft out. And now I can reach in and pull out the other half of the overload clutch mechanism. Next to come off of the quill housing is this feed trip plunger. It should come out fairly easily. This one is pretty good and stuck. I am moving my entire four foot by eight foot workbench trying to work this thing out. 
I'm sure all of my efforts here are not leaving this plunger completely unscathed. But I don't think it's anything I shouldn't be able to clean up with some um, emery paper or maybe a stone. Once I loosen up the quill lock, the entire quill and spindle should fall right out of the quill housing. With the quill and the spindle on the workbench, I'm removing this set screw that locks the nose piece in place. I've had this off before, so with that set screw removed, this nose piece unthreads fairly easily. Going to replace the felt washer at the top of the spindle anyway, so I'll take that off and just toss it. I want to take a look at the bearings on the spindle itself, at least as much as I can. So I need to remove it from the quill. It's not quite a press fit um, in here. So a uh, rubber mallet, dead blow is all I really need uh, to drive it out of the quill housing. Uh, if I had an arbor press that was big enough for me to put this in, uh, I would probably just do it there. <laughs> And with that out, I can now get a closer look at not just the inside of the quill itself, but to take a look at the bearings, spin them, see how they feel. I, I don't feel anything negative here. They seem to feel really clean. Um, the top bearing spins very freely. And the two bottom bearings, again, there's, there's no noise in them. They don't um, feel crunchy at all. Uh, I actually think that these are in pretty good shape. And considering that replacements would be in the neighborhood of $350, um, I think I'm going to just clean these up really good, relubricate them with oil, and put, them back, uh, put the spindle back in the quill. Now with the quill housing completely disassembled, I can go about the arduous task of cleaning all of these components up and getting them ready for reassembly. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. You'd be surprised at how much good that does for the channel. And if you're not a subscriber, uh, please hit that subscribe button so you can be notified when the next video comes out. Thanks for watching.